or what the FMA does uh, and how they represent their members within uh, professional sport, then please uh, come along and have a have a chat to us at some point. Um, also, for this, this is a rather than being a, a direct lecture, this is a, a conversational opportunity. Um, so please, at any point, if anyone's got any questions to any of us here, um, please feel free to stick your hand up and uh, and ask whatever you want. And we'll try our best to get through it. Um, just to introduce us a little bit further, uh, Chris Neville is a performance consultant, um, been about 20 years in the game, uh, and probably for the last 13 years has been involved uh, with the senior England team. Uh, most recently, Football Wise has been involved with Blackburn Rovers as a strength and conditioner, or sorry, sports scientist. Uh, Neil, uh, Neil Huff here uh, has been at Man United for the past 18 years, uh, working with their senior teams and uh, prior to that was five years at Liverpool so he's got comes with a wealth of experience myself I'm a physio I've been working in the game uh, for about 21 22 years so between us we've got way over 60 years of experience between us so we'll try and share some of our knowledge here our session really is about um, resilience and uh, building resilience into the modern day footballer so I guess probably to start us off with is ask the question in kind of uh, what is resilience um, and what your feeling is involved within that? So, yeah. um, I think uh, resilience is, is really the ability to cope, um, to cope physically and to cope mentally with the rigours of professional football. And um, that probably starts now. We, we start taking players in at the age of eight and then it's built all the way through to our first team. Yeah, I think um, just uh, adding on to Neil's um, notes there, it, it's a tough game, and particularly at the top level. I think with you know, clubs like Manchester United, the expectation um, uh, of performance from the early ages right through to the senior team is uh, is great. And of course, the media interest in a club like like United or, or in the former years of Blackburn Rovers when they were in the Premier League, it was. Um, you know, the expectation on players is, is huge, so the, the demand both mentally and physically is, is quite great. So I think resilience for me is, is their ability to, players' ability to be able to withstand those demands, uh, both those physical demands and the, and the mental demands that are put on them. On, almost on a day-to-day -day training to training basis, it's not just a Saturday afternoon, which is, uh, is, is in the media, it's uh, every training session they're, they're under pressure to perform and I think that's... Uh, um, that's a, that's a, you know, my take on resilience is their robustness, toughness, whichever whatever you want to call it, is their ability to be able to withstand that. Um, would you feel that you know that it is particularly important? Is there anything that you'd definitely say uh, encapsulates uh, resilience? Is there one or two sort of certain key areas that you think are really important when you're talking about the mental side or the physical side? Is there anything in particular that you say that is really key in a way to monitor uh, or evaluate? resilience or robustness? I think this is such a multivariate uh, approach really. I think there's so many factors that go into it. Uh, if, you, if you look at recruitment um, within the academies for example, as Neil just said, we, we're recruiting players now 8, 9, 10 years old. Um, you necessarily look at their family backgrounds and, and their social interactions, their social skills. Um, and then, you know, going through right into the senior team, that, you know, kind of looking at where they've, uh, where they've been, if you like, and um, from a mental point of view, their ability to be able to uh, absorb those pressures in life as well as in their football life. Um, we, you know, quite often we don't know some of the stuff that's gone on in the past, if you like, and, uh, and that can have an effect later on. I think from a physical point of view, again, there's... Um, it, it's a multivariate approach. We've, we're fortunate now to have a huge amount of technologies that allow us to <coughs> uh, track, track players, um, both from a physical and performance point of view, and subjectively we ask them um, a lot of uh, information, a lot of uh, questions, if you like, to get, uh, get a real clear understanding of what makes them as people, and that helps us to, to manage them as best we can in terms of, um, uh, you know, the, creating this uh, robust person or athlete in front of us. Um, so I don't think there's one particular measure on both a mental or a, or a physical side. Um, I think it's just 
getting as much of a clear understanding across a broad spectrum of, of uh, measures as we can. Yeah, I, I think um, when we talk about being resilient um, physically, I think that we, we do an awful lot of strength and power profiling, um, functional movement profiling, um, how much that actually gives you is very debatable and, and, and whether it's a benefit, there's a lot of work doing at the moment being done on um, injury, injury prediction models and whether, whether we can actually work out which players are going to get injured and I think when, when we look at our first team squad, some of the, the, the possibly the two least athletic players we have, with Juan Mata and perhaps Daly Blind, um, they're possibly the least injured out of all the players and they'll, they'll bang game after game after game out and it's whether they can just, they're so good at being able to manage their um, game, manage their performance that they, they know the limitations and they, they don't get into situations that create physical injuries. So I guess sort of partly of what you're saying there Neil is that actually monitoring them and, and, and trying to evaluate each person's resilience um, it's not always a precise science, and so there's often variability in that. I think there's, there's so many variables, so many different things to consider when we're looking at things like that. It's, it, it, the, the more data we create, the more data we measure, perhaps creates more questions. Um, so, you know, I, I think we've got a lot of questions to ask of why we continue to collect certain amounts of data and whether we need to rationalise things and make things more specific in the future. Um, with that, is there any particular tools that you've used uh, either with England or the clubs you've worked at, Chris, or yourself uh, at Man United? Is there any particular tools that you've used that you felt have been helpful to monitor in some way some aspect of uh, resilience or mental toughness? Yeah, I think, uh, just, just most recently, I, I think we've kind of, uh, as as the guys have said, uh, we've taken a bit more of a back step on the number of data that we've collected because historically we've collected lots and lots of different data from bloods to urine to salivas to GPS data to heart rate data, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and if it doesn't actually have an effect on what we're doing, then why are we collecting it? So I think what we've done is tried to make some of the systems that we've put in place more robust, possibly simplifying it. Um, but if there is something within those systems and we have a process in place that it does affect uh, our training or our, our strategy around um, training session uh, planning etc. So I, I give some examples, we uh, you know, routinely clubs will, will wear um, GPS monitors or GPS units which will track how far they run, how fast they run, uh, accelerations, decelerations, jumps, changes of direction, there's umpteen number of variables within that um, and we can choose any of those variables that we want to in every training session. Um, we can use both tracking systems in terms of GPS, we can use camera based systems, um, we can use it both uh, so that we're looking at people, we know how far they run and how fast they run but we can actually look at the mechanics of that run as well um, and from that we can then determine <clears throat> various uh, risk factors potentially. Um, in terms of uh, loading, and load is a very, in my opinion, just quite an overused phrase. We don't really know what load means as such. Um, it can be anything from the speed you've run, the amount of distance you've run at, at sprinting, for example, or the amount of cardiac load. It, it can be a variety of things. So I think what's, coming back to my point, I think what's really important for us is to choose the variables that will really make a difference. And, Quite often that's a very multidisciplinary approach to choosing those variables. It's not just what we want from a sports science or a strength and conditioning point of view, it's what the coaches need, it's what the medical team needs. Um, so just bringing everybody into that decision-making process, what's actually gonna have an effect on what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it might, we might have one idea, but if the medics have another and the, and the analysts have another and the coaches have another, we kind of make a decision together. So I think that's, that's what drives our processes really. Just, just one thing that we, we've started to look at um, more recently is um, rather than the more global load issues is we've, we've 
we're trying to assimilate asymmetry. So we've started to do some um, where the GPS units that the players wear for training are centered in their spine. We, we've started to use uh, accelerometers on individual limbs and it gives us uh, details on how much weight bearing they're putting through one leg compared to the other. And sometimes that will signify whether they've got a leg length difference, subtle leg length difference that hasn't been able to pick up. So we do certain corrections with that, which seems to be quite beneficial. I think when you, when you find some of the players that do have big issues, it's often down to um, big leg length differences. Um, and then also we've just started to look at um, uh, jump tests, split jump tests. So we're looking at individual takeoff powers from one leg to another. So trying to get um, an injured leg back to where they were um, pre-injury is, is quite an important aspect for that side of things. Um.